Hi there, this is Alvin with Kickstart Commerce Podcast, where we share search marketing and domain name investing strategies to help grow your business. And in today's episode, you likely hear uh, the sounds of nature behind us. So I am outside and I am recording. I thought I'd take advantage of this beautiful day here in Austin, Texas. And so uh, I'm, I'm sitting outside recording. So in this episode, I'm going to discuss the impact of GDPR and its impact on domain investors and domain investing in general, as well as share with you five actions to consider taking to prepare uh, before this May 25th deadline. So first things first, what is GDPR? So that being said, um, GDPR is the General Data Protection Regulation that was conceived by Europe, also known as the EU. And so what this policy basically represents are two things. The first being the right to private life as a universal human right. That's one. And then two, the right to have one's personal data safeguarded as a distinct standalone universal human right. That being said, combining points one and two enables the EU to demand uh, GDPR uh, standards on businesses in other countries. And so that being said, essentially GDPR replaces all existing data protection uh, laws across Europe. So that being said, not only does it impact those uh, businesses that are within the EU, but also businesses outside of the EU. So let that you know, sink in for a minute, minute that the onus really is on each business to determine whether or not it's in compliance to GDPR. Now, when I think about that, I think about that there are nearly 30 million businesses here in the U.S. And so you know, most of those businesses, and that's just small business, those aren't conglomerates. So, and when I say small business, I mean, in terms of revenues, these businesses have revenues of at least $27.5 uh, million downward. So that is a lot to consider for a small business to be in on the know of the impact of GDPR. That being said, um, I did a bit of research here to find out that there was a survey conducted by Dimensional Research on behalf of Dell. And in this survey, it states that 82% of small businesses are likely not to know about or be in violation of GDPR. Now, this survey was a survey uh, that was basically given to 821 IT and business professionals responsible for data privacy uh, within their 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 line of business, and so that's an alarming number, 82 percent. So when we start thinking about 32 million businesses d don't even know GDPR exists or e is even looming um, in terms of the deadline, as well as they could certainly be in direct violation, whether that's through um, employees, uh, customers, supplier, vendor relationships. There are just a number of little nuances that a business must consider. Um, and not only businesses, but I even think about what GDPR means in terms of how it's going to impact the domain investing you know, community, whether that's at the levels of ICANN, registries, um, registrars, and even right down to domain investors, you know, ourselves. And so before this uh, May 25th deadline arrives, I'd like to share with you five considerations that I believe should help prepare and whether that should help you to prepare rather and whether the uh, GDPR um, deadline. And so one of the first things is that who is data will disappear. And so if you're like me, I live my life around uh, being able to access who is data. And one being in hopes that folks will access who is data, figure out I own a domain, and then they will contact me to purchase that domain or lease that domain. On the flip side of that, I also use it to research domains to figure out who may have owned, you know, expiring domains before me um, if it's not evident in just in terms of the name itself. So that's a that's a big deal that who is data is disappearing. And so one of the actions that you can take is to contact your registrar to uh, determine whether or not they have like an opt in list of being able to 
uh, opt in to the showing or having your who is data displayed when folks look up domains that you own. So that's one aspect. The other aspect is just downloading what who is data you have, and you'll have to get your hands on the, on um, a tool that will allow you to do such. I'll be listing a few here momentarily. Um, and so that's just one of the things to say that because of GDPR, who is data is is uh, greatly going to be impacted and it's likely going to impact um, domain investors and then just the the industry at large. So coming down to number two, one of the next points, um, because of GDPR, there's likely going to be an increased usage of domain name tools. And so tools such as uh, DomainTools.com, DomainIQ, WhoIsology.com, DomainBigData.com, these tools are likely going to see a surge in account creations, account usage would be the best guess, knowing that WhoIs is uh, disappearing. Some of these tools can definitely help you in terms of being able to look at past data um, and, and in some cases even be able to download some of the who is data that I mentioned in point one. So you'll want to get your hands on one of these tools. Some of them do offer trial periods. Uh, some have free memberships, although limited access. And then most of them do offer some sort of premium service that actually have uh, additional premium functionality. So that's point number two is that uh, GDPR is likely to cause an increase of domain tools usage. Next up is number three, which GDPR is uh, likely to impact domain transfers. And so I'm reminded of a couple of months ago when I sold a domain to an investor uh, that was outside of the U.S. And before I was able to complete the transaction, I essentially had to um, prove ownership. And so what that meant was that the uh, email address that was shown on who is for the given domain, I basically had to send an email from that email address basically just to prove ownership before we could transfer the domain, complete the transaction and for before the uh, new owner could take over. So when you think about that example alone, that is going to impact everyone in the domain investing um, community. And so just realize that, number one, I, I certainly suggest that you update all of your Whois data for all of your domains. You don't want to have a domain that has an old email address that you don't have access to or you're no longer using. And so just keep in mind that you're likely going to have to prove ownership uh, that you own a domain, and that's going to be tough if who is data is not visible or present um, after May 25th or as of May 25th. So think about that. Make sure that you get that that information updated so that you can transfer. The next step is to actually transfer to a reputable um, registrar that uh, doesn't necessarily have a cumbersome process. I mean, most of them do to a certain nature or to a certain degree. Um, but you, you know, you don't want to be out there with hundreds, thousands, or even a handful of domains, whether you're a domain investor or not, you don't want to get caught in a situation where you can't prove ownership only because, you know, you can't actually use valid who is information or verify valid who is information. So that's thought number three. Thought number four is that theft is likely domain theft is likely to increase um, with basically the introduction of GDPR. And so one of the one of the things that you can likely do there is make sure that your domain registrar account, make sure that you have and add to it the two step factor or two step authentication uh, factor as well as enable all notifications. And so, you know, if you have certain actions that happen on your account, then you will want to make sure that you that you're notified that if a domain gets transferred you receive an email or a phone call uh, i know some registrars offer the capability of you know hey that if a change is made they'll call you to confirm that you actually want to proceed with the change i mean obviously some people may say well that's overkill that's um that's not really needed i also i look at it and say hey it's um worthwhile because if you're investing 
hundreds and thousands of dollars into domains, you don't want that domain to come up uh, missing or stolen. And then you can't even verify the who is information. Because like I said, once uh, May 25th shows up, who is data is disappearing as we know it right now. And so you want to take every step that you can to combat um, anyone from stealing uh, your domain or making account changes or hijacking your account by any you know stretch of the imagination. So make sure you get that two-step factor or two-step authentication and um, all notifications and uh, verbal approvals or disapprovals added to your account. Last but not least, the last thought that I have uh, to share in regards of GDPR is that we're likely to see an increased number of park domains and sales landing pages. Now, about a month ago, actually even before uh, GDPR, I reviewed my entire portfolio and parked most of them using GoDaddy's cash parking service. Not that I was going to make money, but more so because uh, they made it easy in terms of being able to park a page but as well being able to uh, have a interested link added to it. And whereas a person just clicks that little link on the page and they take into a form, they fill out that form, the email comes directly to me and then I can get back in contact with them. There not only is GoDaddy offering that, most registrars will offer that. Um, if not, you know, I mean, uh, Uniregistry is another great option that comes to mind. Um, as well as many others. But those are two GoDaddy and Uniregistry, Uniregistry that I do know offer that. That being said, there is also going to be an increase in um, if you're not using to park pages, then maybe you're using a sales landing page. And so something that comes to mind is um, like FD.com. So EFTY.com. FD is a great affordable solution that offers uh, responsive sales landing pages and they offer you know um, an assortment of, of templates that you can choose from and not only do they offer landing pages but they also have integrated payment processing so essentially you can probably likely set a buy it now price or negotiate it and then run the transaction using FD. In addition FD not only do they um, offer sales landing pages but they also offer uh, domain and marketplaces. And so you can list your many domains um, as an FD marketplace, which, you know, you can theme and uh, change all the CSS or whatnot. You can get it to look the way you want it to look. And they offer very professional looking uh, templates. So I, I encourage you, uh, one, either to park your domains, uh, whether that's with the service or whether you just point your all of your domains to a web server and one page with all your contact contact information on it, or use a sales landing page um, like FD or even list some of your domains. Use the services like Afternix, Cedo, Namejet. Any way you can, what you don't want to happen is that your what that your domains are not resolving, as well as remember who is is not going to be available. So if their your names don't resolve, no one will be able to contact you, and likely is the case we're going to see because of all this uh, GDPR, we're likely to see an increase in the number of UDRPs filed. So uh, basically, those are suits or claims of cyber squatting. And so whether or not it's cyber squatting or not, that's hey, that's not necessarily this discussion. But I'm going, hey, if you have a domain that is truly uh, doesn't run a file to a trademark and the such, you don't want to lose it to a UDRP when you don't have to. Um, in this case, you don't have to, you know, add a bit of context to the domain. Make sure that it's resolving to a page that uh, essentially will um, alert users at who owns the domain. So do what you can to protect your investment. And with that, we're out of time. Like I said, um, be sure May 25th, it'll be here before you know it. So like I said, take those five steps, you know, making sure that you opt in to having your who is information displayed at your registrar if they offer that service. 
Um, also making sure to download who is data by getting your hands on step number two, which is, you know, getting a, um, uh, domain tools account set up, whether that's with domain tools.com, domain IQ.com, who is ology.com, domain big data.com. And then also remember to update your information, making sure that it is correct so that, you know, you're not going to run a file in terms of not being able to transfer domains. So, once May 25th passed, you want to make sure that before that, that you have accurate information associated with every one of your domains um, listed there as well. You might as well go ahead and transfer. Try to get all your domains. If you can't get it, get them at one place, at least get them with one to two reputable uh, domain registrars. And then obviously thought number four is domain theft is likely to increase because who is data goes missing. And so you'll want to make sure that you have two factor or two step authentication added to your account, as well as the appropriate notifications to give approval or disapproval for account changes in regards to your domain and its respective services. And then finally, last but not least, uh, you know, make sure that you you uh, are resolving your domains to either a parked page or a sales landing page or some sort of domain marketplace so that people can actually contact you. I mean, it's it's very simple to go out and buy a web hosting service and set up some sort of form via WordPress or even by hand. There's enough out there that you can actually Google to do it. It's so easy. And there, you know, I go, hey, it's so easy that there if i put it this way if you lose a domain because you didn't do any of these five steps that's on you um you know there's there's too much technology out there and ease of use uh for anyone to lose a domain and so again i encourage you to take those five steps and like i said with that we're out of time so thank you for tuning in to kickstart commerce a uh, podcast where we share search marketing and domain name investing strategies to help grow your business. Last but not least, please, 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 please subscribe to this podcast via Stitcher, Google Play, iTunes, or however you choose to listen to this podcast. And then last but not least, please visit kickstartcommerce.com and sign up for our weekly newsletter, The Daily Scoop, where I provide you with search marketing uh, ideas as well as domain and name investing strategies as well as sometimes even wordpress tips tricks and fixes and so with that please sign up and that's all for now